Hello, I'm Sean Astin, and this is Sports School. We've all seen it before. A child is enjoying a sport, maybe even excelling, and then suddenly drops out. Fortunately, there are ways that coaches and parents can keep youngsters involved in sports. It starts with understanding the way kids grow as athletes. Some experts divide athletic development into three stages. The romantic stage, where it's all about fun. The technical stage, where an athlete learns more advanced skills and strategies. And the mature stage, where more serious competition is the focus. We'll walk you through these stages and share some tips for both coaches and parents on how to make youth sports a positive experience at every level of play, right here on Sports School. That's what I remember when I started playing basketball at seven years old. It was fun, and it stopped being fun when it felt like a chore, when I felt pressured to play. The first level in athletic development is the romantic stage. This is when the child is young, from five up to about 11 years old. In this stage, fun is the name of the game. For kids under the age of 10, scores are kept almost all the time. Scorekeeping for that age group, if you really think about it, is for the adults. It's for the coaches, it's for the parents in the stands. Go, 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 go! Remember your position! Bring it up the wing, bring it up the wing, nice pass. Come on, Brock, pass it up. Kids understand process. They have fun, they either played well, they did something well, and at the end of the game, they either had fun or they didn't have fun from the process. Three forwards, one midfielder, and two defense. Okay, we're gonna be going to that goal, all right? Forwards are here. Those coaches need to be trained to understand that their job isn't a 10 and 0 record. Their job is to have 12, 13, 14 kids that they have on the team end that season and either say, I love this coach, I want to play for him, or more importantly, I love this sport, I want to play next season. That's what it should be all about. <laughs> Open, drive, push the feet down. I'd probably say maybe, you know, fifth, sixth, seventh grade is, is a good time, uh, you know, to start maybe honing in on, on the competitive aspect, but when they're, when they're young, maybe first to fifth grade, you know, just let them have fun and enjoy being a kid and not try to, you know, cram competition down their throat and, and make them something that they're not ready to be yet as a young kid. Stay with it. Use your body. Get in there, Aiden. Use your body. The middle level, or technical stage, starts around the preteen years and may last through high school or even college. In this phase, an increased emphasis is placed on technical skills, but fun is still essential. This year he's doing yard stroke, uh, freestyle, and butterfly, and he's getting better at it uh, each time he swims. So I think also he's, he's realizing that his time is getting better and it sort of gives him something to look forward to and something to be eager about and to also see even not just competing with other kids, but also competing with his old time, how well he's actually improving. <laughs> Often what will happen is our kids will be playing sports, they'll be young, they're in the romantic stage, they're loving it, and suddenly they get talent identified. And someone says, your child has great potential. She did it! Yeah! Suddenly they'll find themselves in the technical stage, and I think there's a lot of pressure in our society to move on and move kids out of the romantic stage and into the technical stage too soon. You know, I used to ask kids all the time, when did it stop becoming fun? When do you think that was? It was whenever he said, you could be good. Stopped right there. Now the weight was on him to be good. It's no longer just do the best I can do, it's to keep doing better and keep doing better. So the advice that we give parents is really go scout it out. If you're being asked to join a travel team, ask if it's okay to observe. Take your child to the practice, check it out. Is it the kind of environment, the kind of culture that you would be excited for your son or daughter to be a part of? Does it have to be fun? Yes. But what makes it fun at that age? 
What makes it fun to most kids is having this, the skill development up to that level that they're doing it well. Because when kids get to be 12 and 13 years old, for the first time they start being self-aware. Better, but you waited too long to push. Your hands were in there good, but then you kind of waited and bent your arm this way. 70% of kids drop out of youth sports by the age of 13, organized youth sports, because they say it isn't fun anymore. And when the focus of parents and coaches and athletes becomes win at all cost, where the only thing that matters is winning, um, suddenly anxiety goes up, pressure goes up, and the environment becomes one where kids don't have fun, they don't enjoy playing, so they drop out. And if they drop out, they miss out on what much of sports has to offer. The life lessons for people that play sports are just innumerable. Um, everything that our girls do here is involving a team. It's involving goals, leadership skills. There's so much that's developed um, every day in the hockey rink. The way that these girls handle themselves in, in pressure situations and in challenging uh, circumstances is really something that I, I see a, a big value in. The final level is the mature stage where athletes participate in highly skilled and highly visible competitions. In this stage, athletes are well aware of the work and sacrifice needed to succeed. We have a high expectation of what it is that we expect for them to do. If they are able to reach those expectations or we see that they are able to focus and to maintain that attention and to what the skills that they're working on, then we know, okay, they have the potential to actually go farther and to do those things. Come back in, Caleb. Go run to it, Steve. Run to it, run to it. Good job, Brandon. In some situations, training is simply never fun. But what they get out of it is that they were able to do it. There's a sense of achievement that they have with their friends that is, makes them feel like they can set their mind to something and actually accomplish something. But the actual doing it isn't very fun. You know, it's like weightlifting or training or running. A lot of people hate doing it, but they like how they feel afterwards. So it's a challenge for, for coaches to make that work. There are those gymnasts that are really wanting to be competitive and be successful and do well. So they are really driven to do that. So we also have to keep those gymnasts attention focused and everything as well. So as well as those other kids who's like, well, you know, there could be other things that I might want to do. And so if it's not fun, they're like, yeah, I don't want to do that no more. Coaches teach skills and motivate their players, but parents play an equally crucial role in a young athlete's development. I love actually seeing my parents in the stands. It, it's, it's good that they love sports, they love seeing me play, and it kind of encourages me to do better because they're there. It's trying to uh, shuffle work and, uh, and trying to make all the games, but I've gone to almost every game. You know, if you want to do something and you have their 100 percent, uh, you know, 110 support, then uh, you kind of feel like you have an extra man in your corner, yeah. and, and this can be a big boost for you. So it's important that the the parent find out as much as they can from that kid what they're feeling, how they feel about participating. Are there any pressures they're feeling? To talk to them, literally, to ask them. But the key is: is it fun in all the ways that they're experiencing their sport? If a child is constantly whining about going to practice and not enjoying the game experiences anymore, you really need to take a break. Wait for them to tell you they want to go back. It's also important not to push kids to specialize in one sport too early. We tried to put both of our kids into as many sports as we could. And we sit down at the beginning of each season and we take out the paper from the internet from the web page for the organization here and we tell them all right here's the sports that are being offered this season which one do you want to play right, 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 right. If, if 
you just focus in on one thing and one thing only, there's an opportunity for burnout. There's an opportunity for peaking too soon. You know, I evaluate kids and I'm looking at whether or not they've played football their entire life. Well, okay, they've played every year. Have they played multiple sports? Yes, they have. Well, they're going to improve in college. Whereas I look at another kid that, you know, maybe he played football starting at a young age. All he played was football. He's a quarterback. He's been going to a throwing guru since he was seven years old. Well, I see him at a ceiling. There's going to be no really room for growth. What you see is what you're going to get in college. I still play basketball um, all the time, you know, as much as I can. Because I think when you play both sports, uh, things always carry over. Uh, basketball definitely carried over to football for me. Developing a child's athletic talent is a long and sometimes challenging process. But by seeing the experience through their eyes and by shaping the experience to fit their own growth, it can be fun and fulfilling for everyone. I'm Sean Astin. Thanks for watching Sports School, where sports are always in session.